I just sold this computer and it made a pretty successful flip. During this time, the PC flipping slash reselling market is pretty slow. Now there's a lot of factors that affect that. One, it's summer, so people just don't wanna spend money on PCs. They're going on vacations, just spending more time outside. And the second reason, well, a lot of people just don't have spare money laying around to buy a computer. Despite all that, this gaming PC took exactly one week to sell only took about five messages and yes i got left on red and i got some trade requests first let's go over the specs of this computer talk about my total cost go over the profits and i'll share with you some tips that i have that might help you sell some pcs if you're experiencing a slower market as well all that after a word from our sponsor super cdk is running their back to school sale and it's perfect if you just built a new pc or you happen to flip computers as well. Instead of dropping $200 on a Windows key for Microsoft, visit SuperCDK down below and be sure to use the discount code SPLA to get 25% off. You can get Windows 11 Pro for $22 after the discount. You can get Windows 10 Pro for $17. The discount code also saves you money on other Microsoft Office products such as Office 2019. Once you're ready to check out, they accept different forms of payment. Once you get the key, activating it is so simple. Head to your orders page on Super CDK, click get key, then just copy and paste it into your window activation settings and bam, no more watermark and you saved yourself 200 bucks. Thank you Super CDK for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out their back to school sale with the links in the description. Well, here's the computer I sold with the lights on. My total cost was $316.76. Pretty clean, all white looking build and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Let's go over the price breakdown starting with the CPU. I'm using this Ryzen 7 2700 and I paid $49 for it. Now how I got that price, I bought three of these same CPUs on eBay all around the same price. So I added them up, divided by three and got an even price of 49 for each. Now for the GPU, I'm using a white GTX 1070, eight gigabyte graphics card. I bought this one on Jawa and it's a similar story with the Ryzen 7s. I bought another one on eBay, so I added those up and I got a price of $70.28 for each. Now the motherboard that's in this build, it's a gigabyte B450M DS3H V2. And I bought two of these on Amazon Warehouse and it came out to 46.81 each. Are you seeing a trend here? Well, I am. Definitely buy your parts in bulk if you can. If you can buy the same part, parts over and over again. You can do what I do, add them up, divide them and get an average price. Helps kind of lower the cost of your parts. Now for the RAM, I'm using a simple 16 gigabyte kit. It's Corsair Vengeance, two by eight gigabytes, clocked at 3,200 megahertz. I bought this on eBay. I paid $25 and 81 cents. Now for our storage, I'm using a brand new drive from Amazon. It's a King Spec Gen 3, one terabyte NVMe SSD. Price for that was $58 and 96 cents. Now to power this build, I'm using an EVGA 500 BR, 80 plus bronze power supply, has all black cables, and I bought it on eBay. Cost for that was $26.81. Now for the case, the thing that's storing all the components, you might get a little mad at this one, and I got the case for free. The Zalman P10, I got it in white, comes with one ARGB fan, super nice fish tank style design, and it's around $80. Like I said, I did get it for free, but I'll touch on that when I get to the profit. Now, just for the final items, the cooler and the power supply cable extension. The CPU cooler, I'm using the same CPU cooler I use all the time. It's from ID Cooling, it's around $20, comes in black and white, and it has an ARGB be fan. Mine was $19.24. And for the cable extensions, I'm using all white ones from Asia Horse. I bought them on sale on Amazon, bought five of them, and it came to $20.12 each. Before we get to the profits, I want to touch on the benchmarks. And if you want to sell PCs, your PC has to actually perform pretty decently. Of course, you can sell low-end budget builds that barely plays any games, but I hate selling those type of PCs because I hate selling something that doesn't really work all that well. Anyways, I tested this computer in three different games. First game was Cyberpunk, and that's just to test a harder to run game. I ran at 1080p with the medium preset, and we averaged 69 FPS with a 1% low of 50. Now in Warzone Resurgence, I tested this one because it's popular and it's a free game. I tested at 1080p with balance settings, which is basically all medium. And with that, we averaged 65 FPS and 1% low of 38. And another popular free game, of course, Fortnite. I tested at 1080p with DirectX 12, 100% 3D res scale, far view distance, and everything else on low. With those settings, we averaged 120 FPS with a 1% low of 58. Now there's no point in testing your computer if you don't include those benchmarks in the description. So that's exactly what I did when I listed this computer for sale. My first line into the description, I do a quick little like one sentence intro. I just say, yo, just built this gaming PC and say what resolutions it can play games at or something along those lines. And then the next little section, I type a little paragraph out. I just say, I prefer no trades 
but I do mention that I will accept trades if they have older computer parts or just an older computer. Then I go through list the specs and then under that is when I put the benchmarks in. I used to put the benchmarks above the specs, but I find no one's buying benchmarks. People are buying computers. And for that, they wanna know what the specs are. So yeah, I put the specs right at the top and then benchmarks under it. To end the description, I just say, if you don't want this computer, go ahead and message me and we can work something out. I also list what forms of payment I accept. After dialing in the description, I post it on my Facebook Marketplace account and my Jawo account. Now here's the first tip if you're experiencing a slower market. Don't depend on one platform. That's like having one stream of income, either getting fired or losing it, and then you're just screwed. I find it's best to utilize local sites and online sites. Mercari is an online selling marketplace place I actually used to sell on there as well and right now they have zero seller fees so literally no cost of selling on there now on Facebook the ad got a little over 200 clicks and five saves and like I said I got left on red and I got trade requests but good news I took the advice I just gave you and I listed it on Jawa and it sold and no this is not sponsored I'm gonna pack it up so I can ship it out I'm also gonna go over the messages that sold this computer and keep in mind the cost of the shipping materials, around $10, that's important. So I listed it on July 11th. I got a message on July 15th. They just said they wanted me to hold it. Now I'm sort of new to Jawa, so I was unsure if they even allowed like holds. So I just told them, I'm not sure if I can do that. And they were hoping it wouldn't sell. On the other hand, I was hoping it would sell either to them or someone else. They began asking questions about upgradability and performance in Fortnite. I mentioned it was on the AM4 platform, so they have a lot of room for upgrades, like on the CPU, the power spike and hand a better GPU and they can throw in more RAM on the motherboard. I also mentioned that they can switch to performance mode in Fortnite if they do want more FPS. A few days passed and they kept confirming they still wanted it and then it finally sold. I just finished packing up and remember the cost of the shipping materials, $10, that now makes our total cost $326.76. I just shipped the computer and I literally just sold another one as I dropped it off. This video just keeps on proving itself. Now for the profit. It sold for $535. Now obviously Jawa has fees. They have a platform fee, transaction fee, and you can even enable shipping insurance for an extra small fee. After all that, the total fees are $54.84. That leaves us with $480.16, which gives us a profit of $153.40. But remember, our case was technically $80. Let me tell you what I would have done if I didn't get it for free. First of all, I'm not spending $80 on a PC case, especially for a flip and especially for these kind of specs. I would have bought a cheaper case around $50 to $60, get one with some RGB fans, tempered glass, and I probably would have got something from DIY PC. Subtracting around $50 from our cost if I bought my own case, our profit is still around $100. Not great, but not bad. And you have to remember, online will always be less than local because you have to deal with fees like this one we technically lost $54 in profit just to the fees but hey look on the bright side profit is profit and you're still selling PCs in a slow market having fun building PCs testing them and providing a PC to someone so I would say it's good now if you're having a hard time selling PCs right now because you're experiencing a slow market here are some tips for you like I said in the beginning list on multiple sites if you don't want to list online and deal with the fees at least list on two local marketplaces where I'm at I always list on Facebook but just check around you for any local classifieds. Use sites like OfferUp, Craigslist, Facebook, um, I can't think of anything right now. But yeah, just utilize more than one site. Next tip, buy your parts in bulk. Like I said, if you could buy the same part over and over and over again, you can add them up, kind of do a little trick, get a cheaper price. And if you can really buy in bulk, like 10 CPUs from one seller, you can get some really cheap prices that way. I understand you have to have the money to buy parts in bulk, but if you do, it definitely helps. And there's another tip that kind of goes hand in hand with that. If you can have more than one computer listed at a time, try to aim for at least three, you'll definitely sell a lot more computers. I mean, it just makes sense. You're getting more eyeballs. And here's kind of a last tip. If you're struggling with selling PCs, you have to be real with yourself. It might be priced too high or your computer is just straight up ugly compared to everything else out there. Now, if you want to learn how I plan my flips plus price them accurately so I can ensure they sell, go ahead and click the video on screen and that should help you out.